The interesting thing about doing this show is that every time I'm tempted to wrap the whole thing up, I'm reminded of why I started speaking out in the first place. The federal NDP has created a bill that will officially recognize the rights of transgender people in Canada, and believe it or not, the Harper government is actually going along with it this time. Possibly because they could use all the good press they can get right now, especially after, you know, shafting Parliament and ignoring the rule of democracy. But, what a surprise, Canada's religious fanatics are so up in arms about it, you'd think that someone wants to legalize masturbating in public. Specifically, Charles McVitie, Canada's answer to Pat Robertson and Fred Phelps, is screaming from the rooftops that if Emperor Harper really cares about Canadian families, he will protect them from the so-called perversions of people with complex gender identities. No word, of course, of when he'll protect them from pedophiles in various churches, but that's a different matter. For those of you who are new to this show and don't know that Charles McVitie is an unofficial nemesis of mine, I'll fill you in. This man, who claims to be a Christian minister, yet is about as loving and accepting as a soup Nazi, is the president of various ultra-right-wing religious groups, all of them claiming to cherish family values, of course. For years, he has been dead-set against gays adopting children, gays getting married, atheists being accepted by the Girl Guides of all things and Canadian colleges, evolution being taught in our schools, Canada helping rape survivors in the third world get safe abortions, and Canadian movies being made with badly needed tax rebates if they depict gay people in any positive light whatsoever. Like every religious cell on the planet, he usually claims that these things will destroy Canadian families, destroy Canada, destroy Christianity, and destroy civilization itself. Conveniently forgetting that this planet, this species, this society, and the world and the universe at large have already survived far worse things than progressive politics. He also has what can generously be called a history of twisting the facts. For instance, when making his case for effectively censoring Canadian movies, he falsely claimed that a movie called The Masturbators was pornographic. In reality, not only has McVie not seen this movie, but the movie hasn't been made yet. He also claimed that the movie Breakfast with Scott depicts a gay couple brainwashing a boy into becoming gay himself, when anyone who's paid a modicum of attention in the movie would clearly get that this boy was effeminate before meeting this couple, and he was simply encouraged to be comfortable in his own skin. Heaven forbid that a frequently bullied child ever be encouraged to feel human, eh, Charles? He also claimed that people who believe in evolution are Nazis, which is pretty rich coming from a man who comes off as a closeted witch hunter. He also claimed that when E. Harmony got in trouble a while back for not servicing gay people trying to find their soulmates, that it wasn't really discrimination. This guy is the dean of a private college and he doesn't know how to read a dictionary. My personal favorite though, and if you missed it, the reason why McVie is nominated to be this year's Douchebag of the Year, is when McVie righteously said that African women are hardly being raped at all. If anyone would love to send him their thoughts on this or any other subject, I'll provide his email address at the end of the show. Actually, in regards to the transgender issue, to give the guy some credit, and I can't believe I'm saying that, McVie did bring up one reasonable point in objecting to all of this. He has a daughter who, at this point, is 13 years old, and doesn't see why she should have to shower with what is physically an adult man any time that she goes to the gym or pool. Fair enough. But if nudity and modesty is the issue, and I'm guessing it is, then why is it more acceptable for McVie's daughter to be exposed around an adult woman? Maybe McVie hasn't noticed, but not everyone's comfortable with being naked around strangers. And if safety is the issue, he should know that women are fully capable of being sexual predators. The simple truth is, this guy is a shameless bigot and a chronic liar. It's very telling that this time, he's not even going after adoption rights or marriage rights, but transgendered people being legally recognized as human beings. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever a Christian conservative tries to tell you that deep down they aren't really a bunch of racists and homophobes, tell them about this guy. Mark my words, if Stephen Harper ever manages to get a majority, the first thing he'll try to do is take away gay marriage. He already tried the minute he wanted his minority. And if Fuhrer McVie has it his way, Harper won't stop there. Anyway, McVie's attitude is just another example of bigotry that we would condemn instantly if it came from the KKK, but we routinely find acceptable coming from people claiming to be ordained ministers. Never mind for a minute that nothing in the Bible says a word about transgender people, and that even I know Jesus taught his followers to be accepting of people and not to judge them. Who exactly are these families that McVitie and the Christian Taliban keep saying are damaged by anyone different from them? I want names, I want addresses, I want genuine proof that simply being gay or feeling more comfortable as a different sex than one you were born as actually damages and destroys families. More often than not, how these things really ruin families is people being bigots to their own flesh and blood. Yeah, that's really a good family value, isn't it? When McVitie is willing to stand up to that, then he can validly call himself a champion of family values. When McVitie stops turning a blind eye at sexual predators in the third world, particularly those who like to gang rape lesbians and are turning straight, then he can truly say he cares about vulnerable young women. 
Until then, he should get off his high horse and take a closer look at the Bible he claims to cherish. And even though I'm not an NDP supporter per se, I should point out that being socially progressive and accepting makes them a hell of a lot more like Christ than McVie will probably ever be in his life. Enough s Oh, wait, 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 I almost forgot. If you want to tell Mr. McVie how you feel about him, as promised, his email address is charles at canadachristiancollege.com. Also, if you agree that he is a 2010 Douchebag of the Year, feel free to say so by leaving comments about it here or in the 2010 Douchebag video, or by voting for him in the poll on boardonthecorner.com. That's it for me. For real this time.